Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get ChatGPT to pass Originality AI. Now, this is going to be a video that also shows you how to take articles and essentially turn them into man-made concepts. I'll kind of explain what I mean here. So this is a little bit different in terms of creating an article for your blog or even adding content into your blog. And best case scenario is adding the content in. But a lot of the times the content that you want to write about that AI is going to write for you probably already exists on YouTube. And a lot of the different uh, YouTube, um, I guess you could say, videos out there have already information that already exists on Google, right? But chat GPT and open, open AI in general, the GPT platform, uh, takes information from the internet, not from specifically YouTube videos, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So we can use YouTube and utilize the content within YouTube to create for us articles that are written and also encompasses the tone of the video, which will amplify our success when it comes down to the originality of the article written. And I'll go ahead and share with you what I mean, and we're going to actually do a live test. All right, so you can see here, I told the AI to already write an article based on a YouTube video. And if you didn't know, you could actually do that. The video that I'm using for today, this example, is this one by Jordan Syatt. It's a weight loss calorie calculator video. All right. And so this video is a six minute video and 40 seconds that can be broken down into a short article. And this content, you can input it into your actual article. And the way to do this is relatively simple. The first thing you could do is you can go ahead and use chat GPT four, and then what you do is you enable different plugins. For me personally, by default, I always have like web pilot and scholar AI added, but you can also add a plugin called Vox script. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by that. When I click over here, chat GPT, we click plugins and you can see here, I have a Vox script as a uh, plugin that is enabled. Okay. And Vox script, what it does is it takes the link of the YouTube video and it actually pulls up the transcript or the, um, I guess you could say the words that the individual is saying, the closed captions in the video. So if you see here, there's a closed captions button and the text of the, the um, speaker is popping up onto the screen. We can take that information and we can use that as an article. Now, there are two ways to do this, and this is why we're going to run a little experiment here, and it's actually going to get quite interesting for this video, is that it's very simple. I went ahead and created a command for ChatGPT, and I said, take this YouTube video, and here's the link, and turn the information in an article. Can you do that? And then it began doing that right here. And then let's go ahead and take all this information, and let's put it into a originality checker. For this video, I'm going to be using contentscale.ai. I know some people like to use originality. Um, I don't use originality. I, I mean, there's millions of free ones out there. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, originality is bad. It's pretty cool. It just gets a lot of press because obviously people want to promote their affiliate links, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with at all. I'm, I'm pro affiliate links, pro all that kind of stuff. So let's go over here and click check for AI content. And once again, you guys can use this as well. It's content scale.ai. Okay. This is the checker and we can actually see why it determines that is both written by likely AI and human. So here we have pattern at 100%, 87 at probability and 45% at predictability. And you could see where it kind of has these issues. So in terms of the predictability, right, this is possibly written by AI, this section here. And then these sections is unclear if it's written by AI, but we could definitely see that there is pattern to it, right? So what we can do is we can actually potentially fix this. So when we write the article, right, or when we prompt GPT, let's go ahead and create a new prompt and copy this uh, in a new chat rather. And with the exact same plugins, we'll go over here and we'll say, take this YouTube video and turn it into an article, but comma, make sure to add the tonality that is found in the video. And then I'll put in parentheses, 
sounding like a human being, right? And then I'll fix the grammar in just a second, but make sure it's inputted into the article. In other words, make the article sound like the video. It's your job to understand what the video is saying, break it down, analyze it, summer and then summarize into into this article matching the same word usage and tonality that the speaker in the video is using. And with this, now we can actually have a logical comparison between the, uh, uh, excuse me, sounding, um, the logical comparison between the first output and the second. We're also going to say reduce the use of, let's go ahead and see how this measures here, predictability, probability, and pattern. So let's go ahead and do that, of probability, predictability, and pattern in your article that you produce. Okay, and let's go ahead and leave it there. And now VoxScript will kind of do its thing. It's will, it will go ahead and research the transcript of this very video, and it will start compiling things for us. And the longer the video might be, the longer uh, VoxScript will take to do its thing. Now, I would just say, if it takes too long, then maybe try to find a shorter video, right? And you could see here, it's getting into it. And so, um, you could see it's getting right into it. So let's see, let's see what happens. Now, I have a premonition or an idea that this won't solve the issue completely on content scale, but if it saves you an extra few minutes, uh, it's really not a problem. So let's go ahead and let it do its thing. By the way, I also pulled up another one here. By the way, since we are having this video, and this is one of the pro tips, if you're using writer.com, the AI content uh, de detector, it's actually a terrible application. I've tried it more than maybe 70 times, and the, the results are way off. So if you look here, let's go ahead and take this, and let's just put this into here okay without reading any of the text okay so let's see and i hope like i said that the percentage will be higher let's go ahead and experiment with this and um or it'll be better human versus ai so it will tell us okay there you go boom highly likely to be human so is there some probability to it there is uh, but it's better. There's less predictability. And the AI listened to us. So now you guys saw, once again, a live demonstration. And you could see how prompting GPT can make an impact on your success overall. So this was the original version, and this was the newer version. Now, with the newer version, I still would c go in here and edit and make sure I take care of some things. Like when we have, hey there, welcome back, all this kind of stuff, we can remove this, right? We can change some things into the context. But at the same time, guys, you're seeing a live version, a live demonstration of something that actually worked that you can take with you in your business and utilize. Now, I want to go ahead and say one thing uh, in terms of your content written. When you're writing content, Google doesn't care all that much if it's AI written or human written. If you think that Google does care, uh, then you probably don't, and no offense, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but understand what Google's goal is. Google's goal is just simply to provide the very best content to readers. Whether it was written by an AI or written by a human being is irrelevant. All it does is have the author essentially the EAT score right? Authoritativeness, expertise, trustworthiness, etc. So when it encompasses all these details and the content ranks higher, it's irrelevant if it was written by human or by AI. Imagine in a world where AI can write much, much better than humans can. Some may argue that we're already there. I could tell you we're not, but let's just say we are, okay? Then most of the content that's going to rank on Google will be AI driven. And Google, like I said, doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care who's writing the content. The only thing it cares about is, is the information serving the reader in a positive way? Because 
That way they can provide the best results to the reader and they can also show ads in the same query. If ads are shown, they get to make money because they're charging companies for the ad placements. So the whole point here is to understand that originality is not the end all be all. It's creating better content, providing better results to readers and providing them with the service that's essentially looked out for. And when you can do those things, you can find better results. Now, something that I do want to say is you could see here in the first article, we have a more article type structure. We have headlines, right? Uh, we have paragraph based content, and this is good. This is nice. Uh, but the problem is, is that finding the right keywords is actually crucially important for a segment like this in an article. If I was to title this weight loss calculator, a simple uh, and effective guide, I'm not going to get any clicks. It's just going to be way too competitive from a Google standpoint. So something that I do want to add is if you're doing your SEO, your, your content generation from chat GPT, make sure you do some basic, at least basic Google research keyword research on what keywords you can compete for and adapt that specific content to an article that either you have a already written and done the research for, or you're going to do the research for, right? So adapt the content, find a keyword that actually applies because a keyword like this would not apply for me, right? And utilize it within the content if you haven't, if you have written it, but if you haven't written it already, then you would have to obviously do the right keyword research. Speaking of keyword research, I have a whole entire playlist on my YouTube channel called the Mangles Free Course. Okay, I'm actually going to change it to Keyword Research Free Course, so it could be a little bit more understandable. So when you go to my YouTube page, you guys are watching this right now. You guys are probably in the video section. Hit the home button, okay, and you could see the playlist right here. Watch every single video. It will take you through. I know it could sometimes sound a little monotonous, but watch every video. I kept them, uh, you know, medium to short, you know, some six minutes, some 13, some 20 minutes. But watch every video and learn about keyword research. And that will actually give you a start to finding the right keywords for your blog, moving forward into a direction of success, and more importantly, create content that you can have less competition for so you can get more traffic for to your website. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. All right. Peace out. Bye.